Hey guys, Connor here from CameraStore.com, and today we're going to be covering the Pentax ME Super. This is an electronically controlled 35mm SLR released in 1979. It's a follow-up to the Pentax ME that was released just a couple years earlier in 1976. And what this camera added was um, mostly manual exposure to the otherwise aperture priority Pentax ME. Installing the battery on the Pentax ME Super is as simple as turning it upside down and then using a coin like this one to rotate this battery compartment door until it comes loose. Then you take it out. And this camera takes LR44 batteries, these two button style batteries, and you're going to want to put them with the positive side. So there's a plus on the positive side towards the inside of the camera. Just load both those in and take the battery cap, put that back over. And close it up with the same coin. Now to install the lens, we're just going to take the caps off here. There's a lens release here that you'll press to get the cap off. You can see that moving in. And we'll take the, the lens here and then line up this red dot on the lens with this red dot on the body. Put it on, twist, and you'll see the aperture open up when the lens is properly installed. Now let's go over the features and functions of the Pentax ME Super. So we already covered the lens release right here. We also have a self timer here that you rotate around here and then it waits 10 seconds, I believe, before the shutter fires. Let's go over to the top. We have the ISO selector here. So this will line up with whatever film you have in and you see it says 100 now. We lift this silver ring and rotate that to whatever speed is on the film. So if you have 400 speed film, 400 ISO. Moving on, we also have exposure compensation here. So just, if we just take this dial and rotate it, it gives you exposure compensation. So it, it'll make the picture brighter or darker depending on what direction you go and you can have a little bit more creative control over the camera's uh, light meter with that. Moving on, we have a hot shoe here for mounting a flash. And then moving a little bit further, we have the um, manual buttons here. So this is a down and an up button for um, changing shutter speeds in manual mode. Um, moving on, we have the mode dial here. So we have L for lock, shutter lock. Can't press the shutter in that mode. Click it down to auto, and so this will be aperture priority auto exposure. The camera will read the aperture that the lens has selected here and give us a shutter speed based on that. Move it down just a little bit. And from auto mode, you do have to release this lock. So there's a button that you press right here, this white button. Press that, rotate. Now we're in manual mode, uh, which means that the shutter speed is picked by the photographer as well as the aperture. Um, click down just one more. This is the flash sync. So it's 1 1 25th of a second. If you're using a flash, that's the setting you're going to want to have open. And just one more for bulb mode. So now the camera will stay open as long as we keep the shutter button pressed. Just a little bit further, this is the film advance lever. Pull that between every shot and you see once I do that, there's a little indicator here that tells us that the shutter is cocked and that the film has been wound. We also have a frame counter right here that counts up as we fire the shutter. Moving on to the back of the camera, we have the viewfinder here, and we have a memo holder. So if you are using a box, or a film that comes in a box, you can put the end of the box in there to remind yourself what film you're using, or any piece of paper with any note to remind yourself of whatever you want. So I've gone ahead and loaded the camera now, just so that you can see this indicator. So as I pull the advance lever, you can see it sort of has a wiggle to it. So that just shows you that the film is being pulled across the camera and is loaded properly. Moving on to the bottom of the camera, we already covered the battery compartment here and it's labeled battery, so you know what goes in there. 
we have the tripod mount here. We have a rewind button that releases tension in the body here and allows you to rewind the film. And then we also have another cover here that's actually a, a function for the motor drive. So if you're attaching a motor winder to this camera, you unscrew that, the motor drive attaches there. And now we'll take a look inside the viewfinder of the Pentax ME Super. So when we have the camera set to auto mode, there's a series of LEDs that correspond to shutter speeds on the left-hand side of the viewfinder. Uh, as you move the aperture, the camera is selecting a shutter speed, and that LED tells you what shutter speed the camera has selected. So it'll give you green LEDs for ones that you won't have an issue with camera shake, yellow LEDs for ones that you may have an issue with camera shake, and it also has red LEDs to tell you when the photo will be underexposed no matter what setting the camera can pick. So when we pop the camera into manual mode, you'll notice that there's a green LED next to the M that lights up. That just tells you that you're in manual mode. Uh, and then you're going to want to pay attention to both the green LED and the over and under markings on the left-hand side of the viewfinder. Uh, those signify whether the photo will be over or underexposed, depending on your settings. So the green LED next to one of the shutter speeds represents what shutter speed you have selected. So you can move that up and down with the two buttons next to the mode dial. The up one goes up and the down one goes down. The goal of this system is to not have a blinking LED next to over or under. Um, once there's no blinking LEDs, that means the photo is properly exposed and you're ready to take your picture. The Pentax ME Super also has a split prism in the center of the frame there. So as you move the focus ring left or right, you'll see those two images um, go in and out of alignment. For something to be in focus, the top image has to be in line with the bottom image. Looking at the lens now, we have a focus ring and an aperture ring here. So the focus ring just controls how far away from the camera is in focus, and you see that there are numerical scales here. It goes down. The minimum focus distance here is 0.45 meters, and it goes all the way out to infinity. Quite a long focal throw on this Pentax 50mm f1.4 Pentax M lens. And moving into the aperture ring, this controls the amount of light that is let in when the shutter is fired. So if we put it at 1.4, the widest aperture the camera has available, and then I fire the shutter, you'll see that the aperture doesn't stop down at all. But if I twist this all the way down to 22, you'll see that the aperture oh, it doesn't quite slow down. Yeah, there we go stops down quite a bit. There you go. So that's letting in quite a lot less light than that. And that also controls depth of field. So this smaller number has a shallower depth of field and gives that nice smooth background effect that people like. So thanks for watching this overview of the Pentax ME Super. Uh, let us know in the comments below what you'd like to see next. Otherwise, thanks for watching.